Hello and welcome back to the Folklore uh, Hiking Stick Workshop. Um, I do have a project that I've taken on which is a little bit different than um, what I usually do and it's come about because a friend I work with within the funeral industry has actually said come over to a small holding and um, I can harvest some sticks. I kind of you know dismissed it for quite a while but he was quite insistent and I came over and um, I'm glad I did because I walked away with a hundred pieces in just one side of the field. It's absolutely like a gold mine there. But putting that to one side, in return, I took away uh, the actual um, thumbstick, deer antler one that you saw on the picture to this video. And um, he's asked me to renovate it. Renovating may be a strong word. It's really an all, it is really a rebuild, total rebuild. But, um, you know, I'll let you have a look. It's not actually in here, the workshop. And there is a reason for that, and it's in the greenhouse. We will go out there and have a look at it, and I'll have to do my first bits of work to it in the greenhouse because of the issues surrounding this uh, stick. I will let you have a look. This stick holds a lot of uh, value to him emotionally uh, and, uh, and sentimentally. Um, so, you know, I want to put in as much effort I can to produce a nice stick for him with this antler uh, topper so that he has at least um, something that he can regard as part of what is being lost when I take away the piece of shaft attached to it but we will go out there now and we'll have a look Well, here we are. We're inside the greenhouse. If you're wondering why my dustbins are in here, because uh, we've got foxes around at the minute. And I've already had to pick up a load of rubbish off the lawn where um, they've stripped all the, the, well, stripped the bins totally to pieces. So here we have the antler. As you can see, it's in a really poor state of condition. It's not rotted, but, you know, it's not too far. If I don't do something to preserve it, it's going to be lost. There is actually a kind of little bit of a motive. I don't know what that is. And um, he hasn't, uh, you know, told me what it is. So I've now got to find out from him, get a bit more detail. As you can see, the joint has been cut at an angle. And I'm not sure why that is. And I'm not sure if there's a metal rod running down here or if there is actually a wooden dowel. It it does move it's not fully secure there is movement there um, i can only guess that angle has been put on it to help prevent any sideways movement but ultimately it has failed right the reason it's in the shaft if you have a look at it you can see all these holes that is woodworm and it's been bored into and it is a complete mess it's split the bark is lifted off and if you come down here you will see while droving cattle he did state he was annoyed with his son for giving a cow a bit of a, a helping hand to move a bit faster and it snapped off but you know in any case this shaft was never going to be salvageable anyway and I did reassure him of that so as you can see this has got to come off and um, I'm going to do that now, but it's in here, quite simply, I do not want to transport any any chance of insects to my workshop, to my stock, to my sticks, or to my household property. In here, even this wood, it's just greenhouse in here, and nothing goes anywhere further than here. But ultimately, if you ever have a piece like this, never take it anywhere near your home or workshop or sheds or anything that you value. Because quite simply, you do not know if there are still any boring insects waiting to come out and infect any other wood. Like I said, this here will never leave the greenhouse. It's of no value and it will be burnt uh, when it's, uh, you know, past its sober date. But let's find out how this antler is actually attached to this shaft. The shaft is of no value, so I can be as destructive in cutting it off 
as you know I need to be but I've got to save the antler so let's go for it it is a bit echoey in here but um, at least I'm warm and I'm out of the wind it is freezing outside anyway so what tools am I going to start with <clears throat> I've brought an array of tools just a pair of snips pair of pliers a knife I've got two saws I've got like a coping saw and I've got a metal saw and I've just got the shears that looks a bit barbaric but what I'm going to do I'm just going to take this one off about four inches uh, down from the antler so I've got something more manageable I'm going to throw this directly on the lawn and it will be burnt pretty much once I've done my first investigations and basically seeing what I'm dealing with here. So, whoop, and that wasn't a good start, but this through the glass. But um, yeah, I'm going to now cut this. Right, I can feel movement on this actual joint. It's not as secure. I've got a feeling it could be a rod, but I'm gonna take this back slowly and we'll find out what is there. But uh, ultimately, like I said, you can see this antler is in really poor condition. Um, you know, it's realistically, you know, I wouldn't have uh, bothered, but you know, it's sentimental value. So we're going to give it its best shot and whatever we do, whatever we do and turn this into a thumbstick, it's not going to be any worse than it is now because it's it's very soon going to be, um, you know, just a pile of rotted antler and wood. So let's see what we can do. Um, I'm just going to snip away or cut away, I think, because I don't want to, um, you know, if that rod is any good, if it is a rod, I will try to try and reuse it and I'm trying to leave her open on one of the cracks here this wood is really 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 poor um, but I say because I, 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 I don't really know what I'm dealing with I do not want to damage anything too much as you say it's really just all falling apart here um, I think I will take a bit more back on this. As you can see, um, it hasn't done my shears much good. I've got to resharpen them after this. You can see I've got a very rusty old um, metal bar in there. And um, pull that off. That's of no use now. Right, I've got to take the rest of this away. I can see a crack running down there. I might be able to just leave it off in half. So... Hopefully I can clean this up and it will all be solid and it was Yeah, it, it looks like if you look at this It's the wood moving on the actual metal and that's a common fault if you use metal rods in uh, deer antler sticks very common and that's why most um, Professional stick makers will insist on using a wooden dowel method over this method, but you know ultimately i've got this in situ that might work to my advantage so let's see if we can get this off i've just put it down here yes it is splitting i'll see if i can let you see it is coming apart there i'm chucking this out the greenhouse right you can see down there i've got the metal rod there exposed and this here is totally coming apart well there you go metal rod as what i you know first initially thought and um, i'm just going to check the integrity of it in the actual antler and what i can do with it but um yeah this is the first stages of this actual um rebuild so uh here here we are this is what we have left from this uh, uh thumb stick I've got a steel rod I can use. This is all rotted. 
and I, I will take you along and show you a complete rebuild um, it'll probably be over uh, a, a little bit of time but um, yeah that uh, angle was definitely cut to provide security for the uh, antler but as you can see it's in really poor condition so I'm going to have to I'm going to have to um, clean this up and see what I can do to salvage this the actual threaded rod looks like it's still pretty solid and the actual resin epoxy still looks good so that's one saving grace so we'll take this into the workshop and we'll see what we can do with it and the uh, very first job I'm going to do is burn that piece of wood because it is so heavily contaminated with woodworm. So, you know, that's my uh, first job in this rebuild, believe it or not. So I've just popped out to the greenhouse and um, I'm just having a quick scan at it, looking at it, and I'm just trying to formulate a plan in my head how I want to do this. I've just had a quick little investigation. This is definitely solid in there. I could try to remove it, which would mean like drilling out around it and trying to pull it out. But there's ever every danger I would, you know, this this deer antler would not take that. So I think it's in, you know, I know it's in definitely solid. That hasn't moved. It was the wood component that failed. So I'm going to clean this up. And I think I will leave this as it is. And um, I'm going to investigate and have a look at this uh, antler and see what is recommended for me to stabilize it. And indeed, you know, bring it back to life. Um, I think it's too far gone to do a complete restoration on it. But I want to get it back as good as I can. So, um, you know, it was basically just fire, you know, fit for fire as it was. But um, the more I look at it, it may look like there's nothing of value here. But I think we'll be able to get this back to some sort of like former glory. So, um, yeah. Let's go and make sure that fire is safe and I think we'll uh, go away, start selecting a piece of wood, start finding out, you know, information on how I can stabilise this uh, antler and we'll go from there. There we go. Whoever put a lot of time and effort into crafting this stick may be horrified to see how it ended up, but... Um, you know <laughs> that there was a too big a risk to leave that wood you know in the wood pile or kicking around the property get rid of anything with woodworm as soon as you can well then we've stripped down the actual uh, deer antler thumbstick we've seen what we're dealing with and we know where we've got to go we do know very luckily for us we don't have to drill out that uh, metal uh, bar because we can salvage that and use that otherwise um, if it was no good or the fixing was poor we would have to drill around it and extract it and re uh, sink one in there which you're in danger of wrecking the antler itself um, and as you've seen by the condition I don't think it really would have stuck up uh, to too much abuse but so we're lucky there but ultimately um, even though it was cut at an angle the shaft which has stops it doing the twisting motion it still had that forward and back motion which ultimately caused it to fail so I've got to come up with a way of trying to um, overcome that and give it more uh, strength or resistance to moving in all directions and I'll have to think on that I do have a couple ideas but till we move on to the next stages, um, I thought I'd take you along and see this build because these don't come along very often for me. And um, 
you know so it's a bit of a learning curve it's all experimentation and it's all figuring it out as we go along so i hope you enjoyed that so far and till the next installment of what we do with the antler and making a new uh, shaft we'll um you know leave it there and i hope to catch you again and this is andy from hidden valley footpaths you're in the folklore workshop and um till next time stay safe